Praise be to God, we want to thank you again for joining us in a study of God's Word, uh, um, understanding the Father's heart. I'm evangelist teacher Joseph A. Brown, and I just thank God for you joining us this day. I just want you to know today that God truly enjoys it, I believe, when we study His Word because His Word is His love letter to us. And to see His children reading his love letter, studying his love letter, uh, getting to know him in a more intimate and personal way. I think our Father truly enjoys seeing his children study his divine word. So I think it's very important that we study his word and to get his word down on the inside of our spirit. And I want you to know I'm blessed any time that I have an opportunity to not only study his word, but to share his word with his children because we are the children of God if we have been born again and we have come to know him in a very personal way by allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and we are now children of God and because we are children of God the Father has a special interest toward us now because he has invested his son in the earth and we have chosen to allow him to come into our life and to come into our heart and to change us well, but we've been studying the Word of, the word of God uh, in the book of Romans, and we've actually been having a very good time in the things of God. And I want you to know, in the name of Jesus Christ, the more you know of God's Word, the more you are able to walk in the power and the authority that God calls you to walk in uh, this life. You know, too many of us as believers are walking around as victims. And we're not victims, no matter what the circumstances is around us. If we consider ourselves to be victims, then Peter was a victim, John was a victim, Paul was a victim, and even Jesus Christ was a victim. And I want you to know in the name of Jesus that they were no victims, but rather they were bold and confident in the things of the living God. And we're going to have to be bold and confident in the things of God in the day that we live today. But the only way to be able to do that is that we have a relationship and we understand what that relationship is. And I, and I say to you today that many believers don't know their relationship with the Father and what relationship that they have uh, with the Son and their relationship with the Holy Spirit of the living God. And that's why we're teaching on this particular subject and that subject is walking in the Spirit or being led by the Spirit of the living God. What does that really mean? I mean, there have been believers who have been Christians for years and yet have never experienced the delight of allowing the Holy Spirit lead you and guide them in all truth. But I want you to know today that if you read God's Word and you get an understanding of it, the Holy Spirit will begin to lead and guide your life uh, automatically. Praise be to God. But look, we're in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans uh, and we have come to the fifth verse that reads uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh we said that if you are a person who have not been born again then you are led by your flesh you don't have that's your pattern that's who you are and there is nothing in this life that can change that unless you be born again and that's why I like to say, uh, you know, to us as believers, we have to be mindful many times of how we look at those who have not been born again. And even if they're family members and we ask some questions, well, I wonder why they did that. Uh, they know better than that. How many times I've counseled uh, as a pastor, counseled uh, many believers who uh, come to a place where they're upset with someone and they ask the question, well, they know better than that. Why do they keep doing this to me? You know, yes, I know they're not born again. I know that they are still walking in the world, but, but I don't know why they do this to me, and then they expect me not to get angry. Well, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, you ought not be angry, and you ought not stay angry, and let me tell you why. When we look at the way people respond and the way people act, they act according to their nature. It's like taking a pig and dressing that pig up and putting a tuck on that pig and, and, and combing that pig's hair and washing it real good. 
And then when you let it loose, it goes off in the mud and begin to waddle in the mud and then you get upset about it. Why are you upset about it? You know that that pig has the nature of a pig. That that pig has the nature of its own bloodline, of its own uh, a mother. Uh, the pig, that's a pig will be a pig. Well, don't expect anything different from someone who is lost. When they are lost, they are lost. And there are things that you have done. If you would go back in your check it past, as I can, there are things that I did against other people that irritated other people, and they probably asked that very same question. Why is he continue to do the things that he's doing against me? And not realizing that I was actually doing anything against anyone, but I was. Because I was simply acting out a pattern of my nature. And that's why the Word of God says here, for they are, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So don't be amazed or befuddled because someone has done something against you and you can't understand why. There's a pattern behind it. It is because they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and they also is not being led by the Spirit of God. But you as a born-again believer has the ability to respond through the Spirit of God. And when you respond to the, by the Spirit of the living God, you're going to respond in a godly way, in a gracious way, in a loving way, in a way that will somehow touch the life of that person who's actually doing things against you. Because you are a believer and a trusting believer and they can tell that by how you respond and it is only Satan who is actually allowing you to be tested because he wants to keep that other person trapped and so if you respond in a very negative way then that other person will not have an opportunity in order to be able to see the victory that is in you and because they cannot see that victory that is in you then they may never get an opportunity to see Christ again but it was through you and your actions that Christ was to be revealed. And so it's how you respond to the things that comes against you. But don't expect the flesh to act anything but the flesh. For that is its pattern. For it, he writes, but they that are after the Spirit mind the things of the Spirit. So we who are children of the Spirit, we mind the things of the Spirit. We are talking about how to walk in the Spirit of God. How to allow the Spirit to lead us. One of the ways to allow the Spirit to lead us is to always recognize this. That you have the Spirit living on the inside of you as a born again believer. As we said before, it may be quenched and it may be grieved and you may not have, have even spoken to the Holy Spirit or not even known that the Holy Spirit could actually live on the inside of you. But He can. And He does. And He wants to guide you. And He wants to direct you each and every step. And that can only be done by the Spirit of God. And that's what connects us to the Father. We're not connected to the Father through our flesh. We're not connected to the Father by our good deeds. We're not even connected to the Father by our own thinking and our own brain and our own heart. But we are connected by the Spirit of God. So it's the Spirit of God that is living on the inside of you and I that God connects with by His Holy Spirit. And He guides us and He protects us. But He also say, writes in the fifth verse, and it's in the fifth verse that, uh, but they that are after the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit, which we just said. But the sixth verse, it says, for to be carnally minded is death. To walk in carnality ultimately leads to death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There are those who are seeking for peace all over the place. And I want you to know, peace can only be found in only one way. And if you're spiritually minded, you find life and you find peace. People are looking for peace in all places, my brothers and sisters. They're looking for it in a job. 
They're looking for it in a relationship with someone. They're looking for peace uh, in a bottle or in a joint. But they'll never find peace there because peace ain't found there. You might get a, 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 a respite for a season, but it's not going to last. Ultimately, that high will wear off and that hangover will then overwhelm you and then your peace will be gone. But the peace that the Lord gives us according to his own word is a peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that cannot even be understood, but a peace that is real. And a believer has the ability to get that kind of peace. But that peace can only come through his relationship with the Father's Word. When you have a relationship with the Word and you allow the Word to penetrate you on the inside, it changes the way you think about life. It changes you from being discontent to being very content as a born again believer. Now I want to say to you today that before I go any farther that if you are not born again and you have not come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you to know that you can. And I want you to know that's the most important relationship that you could ever establish on this side of eternity. You might have a relationship with your mother. You may have a relationship with your father. You may have even a great relationship with your wife. But if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a true one, and that true one means that he leads and guides your life by his divine spirit, I want you to know today that you can ask him to come into your life and he will come into your life and change you right now, right where you're at. You don't have to go to any priest or any preacher in order to be able to establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though men will tell you that because they have a desire to make you a part of what they are doing. A part of their little denomination or whatever you might, might want to call it. But I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ never spoke about the church being a denomination. Never spoke about the church being uh, an organization. It is a person. It is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why the Lord God knows those who are His. You can belong to all these denominations if you desire. And there's nothing wrong with denominations. But just remember, they are man created. They are man organized. But the greatest relationship that you can ever have is one. When there are trouble in your life, in the midnight hour, your denomination can't help you then. Your organization can't help you then. In the midnight hour when anguish and pain is gripping you and there doesn't seem to be a way out. No, you need a relationship. You need something that will be there at all hours. At all moments of the day. And no matter how deep and dire your situation is. You know that he'll be there for you. Because he promises never to leave you. Nor to ever forsake you. Once you come to know him. And when you hear someone sharing the word of God. It will mean something to you. More than just some mere words. But you will better understand that love letter that Jesus Christ established in this earth for you and for I. But as we study the Word of God, we look at the seventh verse that reads, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see, when one walks in carnality, they are an enemy of God. When you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are actually an enemy of God. The only true children of God 
is those who are born again. Those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Anyone else is an enemy of God. You might say, well, I belong to this place or I belong to that place. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are today an enemy of God. But it doesn't have to stay that way. You can come to know Him in a very personal way and become one of His children. And when you become one of His children, then you are no longer an enemy of the Father. But until you do that, you actually are an enemy of God. Do you get what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, that, uh, 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 that you, know, you, you, you look at people who are lost and not recognize that they are enemies against the God of creation. And they don't even realize that. And that's why we must pray incessantly for these people. Because... Without a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, when this life is over, the Bible says, then there's judgment. And we all will have to stand before our Father and our God. As children, we'll stand before Him, not for the judgment of our souls, but for the judgment of our works. But those who do not know Him, they will stand before God, the Father, as an enemy of the cross, as an enemy of the Father and the Son, and the denial of the Holy Spirit. You don't want to be caught in that place, my friend, not knowing Him, not concerned about Him. You don't want to be caught in that kind of place and that kind of understanding when you stand before him no you don't I know there are those who say today if I go to hell I just go there with meet my friends my partners all down there and we just gonna have a good time well I want you to know if you could dial up your partners and they already have made it there before you huh, let me tell you something they ain't having a good time they're not having a good time at all but rather they are in pain, suffering, knowing that they are condemned and knowing that they'll never, ever get a chance to see the face of any loved ones again, nor will they ever be able to get the chance to see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ because they chose to live their life the way they wanted to rather than in obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can come to know Him today, and that's why I continue to say that, because that's very important. That's the most important part of whatever I'm doing right here. Everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm teaching is null and void for you if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior. Now those who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, now this is great meat that they can devour and they can eat and they, it can cause them to grow and mature in the things of God. But if you don't know God, this does you no good whatsoever. There is nothing but mere words being tossed into the air because it means nothing to you at all because you have made up your mind that you're not going to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and to change you. But, my brethren, we're looking at the eight uh, uh, the seventh verse, because it, but the corner mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. In other words, it cannot even be subject to the law of God. The corner mind, the corner mind is not even made to be subject to the things of God. In other words, it is not able to be controlled by the things of God. Now, no, that's what it's saying right here. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is not subject to the law of God. So when people do things against you who are born again believer, and they're not born again, and they're not saved, and we can't understand it, and we're trying to figure it out, quit trying to figure it out. Because according to God's word, that their attitude and their ways are not even subject unto God. 
are even subject, as it says, to the law of God. They're not subject to the law of God. They're doing the best that they can with what they have. And let me tell you what, my brothers and sisters, that is not much. That's why you and I are called to walk in the spirit of the living God, because if we walk in the flesh, we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. We will fulfill carnality. So we are now called to walk by the spirit of the living God. We are called to walk in a way that will bring glory to Almighty God. And the only way to do that is to walk by the spirit of the living God. Remember Jesus said, I do nothing unless I first see the Father do it. And what was he referring to? He was referring to what he saw by the Spirit of God. What he saw the Father do, that is what he would do. And that's why he could say, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Because he knew what the Father will was. Because he knew it by the Spirit of God. You can know what the Father's will is by the Spirit of the living God. You can't know it no other way. Those religions that believe that the Spirit of God cannot live in a person, they cannot know the will of God. Actually, they don't even have a relationship with the Father. Because the fact is that they do not even believe that the Holy Spirit is able to live in a human being. But the Spirit can live in you today, my brothers and sisters. And that's what we are actually discussing now. That you can know. And you can allow the Spirit of God to guide you. And you can allow Him to protect you. But it's you who have to make up your mind and say, Lord God, I desire for the Spirit to lead and guide me. And to keep me going in the direction that I know that I should go. And according to God's word, the carnal mind is not subject unto the things of God or the law of God. But we are subject unto the Lord by the spirit of the living God. He says, neither indeed can be, neither can it uh, be subject to the law of God. So the eighth verse reads, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So it is impossible to please God if we are walking in the flesh. Now those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and do not have God's Spirit living in them, then they're, they, don't, they, they don't know nothing else but to walk in the flesh. So according to God's Word, they cannot even please God. So with everything that is within you, my friend, and if you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, no matter all that you do, you can't please the Father. Because first of all, you're not His child. And there's nothing that you can do to please Him. It doesn't matter how much money you put in collection, how much tithe you give, or how much offering you give or how many vows you make or how many good deeds you do or how much work you do around the church and though the pastor might say that you are very faithful and he really likes that you're faithful let me tell you what if you're not born again then you're missing the boat it doesn't matter what your pastor think of you your pastor is not the one that's going to stand with you before almighty God and pass judgment on you Rather, it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ himself passing judgment on you or the Father passing judgment on you. So it doesn't matter what your pastor might think or what your evangelist might think or what the uh, Sunday school teacher might think of you or what your mother think of you because we can hide things from them. But we can't hide anything from God the Father. He knows everything about us. He knows us from the inside to the outside, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. He knows everything about us. So it's up to us to make up our mind that we desire to walk in the Spirit of God and to walk in the Spirit of God is first to acknowledge that the Spirit of God lives on the inside of me. Now I have to find out why the Spirit is grieved, why the Spirit is quenched on the inside of me and why He's not guiding me. 
And that's some of the things that we are going to talk about uh, even more as we delve deeper into God's Word. But I want to say to you today, I'm really am blessed that you have joined us and uh, shared with us because we believe in the power of God's Word. And we know that if you get some of God's Word on the inside of you, that great things can happen. Lives can be changed and transformed by the Word of God. And we pray that you will continue to study God's Word because where God's Word is, there is power and authority to live a victorious Christian life. And you can do that by simply believing. God bless you today.